Hello everybody, um, tonight I was going to talk about how to travel to Sri Lanka. Um, it's actually a little bit more complicated than a lot of people realize um, and there's quite a lot of details. Um, actually a lot of the internet um, postings on YouTube don't really cover uh, how difficult Sri Lanka really is uh, to travel to. So there are a number of different airports to travel to and from Sri Lanka. Um, on this map here, you can see um, this is the airport in Colombo. Um, but basically, the main <coughs> airport uh, that is affordable uh, and that also takes you to other destinations that you might want to travel to um, is Kuala Lumpur, um, which is this one right here. Um, and that typically costs around $150. So here's kind of a price graph. Um, if you're gonna do it like in the next few days, it can be up to $180 um, and then as low as $120. And that's a one-way ticket um, out to Kuala Lumpur. So how did I find out about that? Um, so basically, if you're flying in and out of Colombo, there's basically uh, this airport just north of the city um, that most people fly out of. Um, if you click on the airport um, and you go to more details, um, you'll see um, a list of the top flights uh, that people fly to. Um, a lot of the locals um, are flying to uh, uh, Mali and, and Chennai uh, and Dubai and Doha, but really the first one that shows up uh, that's not uh, simply all just locals is Kuala Lumpur. Um, you can see Ab Abu Dhabi, um, Mumbai, um, Delhi, Kuwait City, and Bangalore, but most of those are just Indians uh, that are traveling to and from other places. So Kuala Lumpur really is the most affordable and uh, flight that most people do that's in and out of Sri Lanka into the rest of Southeast Asia. Now, one interesting thing you might want to do is check where uh, you can fly to once you get to Kuala Lumpur. Um, and basically, that is Bali. Uh, you can see that uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, most people do fly to Singapore. Um, but the next major tourist uh, destination is Denspar Airport, which is Bali. And you'll notice that uh, Bali actually has more flights to it than it does uh, Bangkok, for instance. Now, the interesting thing is that once you check out Bali, you'll notice... Um, that uh, actually Kuala Lumpur is one of the major stops uh, to and from uh, the airport there. So Singapore is probably a little bit more, um, and then Jakarta obviously because it's in Indonesia, but there's some other uh, Perth, Australia, and there's actually a lot of Australians flying in and out of Bali. Um, you'll see here um, in Sydney as well. So what all do you need to know about traveling to Sri Lanka? Um, well, the first important thing is that the airport is actually not really that located near Colombo, and Colombo isn't that desirable of a place to visit uh, in general. Um, a lot of the people travel down to Agali um, and then uh, this part of the southwest uh, Sri Lanka, basically the coastline. Um, so it's actually quite a big trip if you think about it. You're having to travel from here, all the way down to there before you even get to where you want to go uh, in Sri Lanka. So it does require uh, quite a lot of knowledge of how to take the uh, transportation there. Um, and that actually makes it quite complicated. Um, and from what I've heard uh, from other travelers, um, there is quite a lot of difficulty even in the currency exchanges there. Uh, sometimes you go to an ATM, and in fact, you can go to many ATMs, and your ATM card will not work at all. So you have to really figure that out as well. Um, so the problem is, is that um, Colombo is the major city, um, which is up in here. Um, and then basically, um, if you go anywhere else, you may still need to have your currency with you. So Now, Sri Lanka is changing really fast. As you can tell, um, the c people are actually making uh, about $10,000 per year there now um, or more. Um, that's even changed even the last few years. So you might say uh, maybe it's around $12,000 a year. So here's a first beachfront picture of Colombo, and you can see um, actually it's kind of a rainforest. It's quite rainy. Um, it looks like it might have even rained in this picture fairly recently. Uh, but you can see this green area, which is one of the main public parks along the oceanfront, it isn't super, super nice. Um, so there isn't a lot of really nice public space right along the beachfront, um, and it's actually pretty difficult 
Oh, it's a swim in water right in Colombo. Now here's another uh, picture of Colombo downtown area and you can see uh, there's actually a park and a beautiful uh, building here that you can go up into and take a look at. So there are a number of things that make it difficult to travel to Sri Lanka, uh, not only the safety, but you may want to take a look at the State Department's website. Um, I'll post it uh, in the link down below on this. Um, but basically, you do need a yellow fever vaccine uh, to go there. Um, and also, you have to file an electronic travel authorization ETA system. You can do it once you get there, but apparently it is quite difficult waiting in lines and doing some other things. So you actually will need to file that. Um, prior to going to Sri Lanka. So you will notice that uh, India actually requires a uh, electronic visa prior to entry. Uh, Sri Lanka does also require that. So the, the light green, there's like a dark green, which actually you don't have to have a electronic visa. You get a visa on arrival, um, and uh, but uh, or visa is not required at all. So um, basically most of South America, most of Latin America is like that um, and most of Europe, but actually Southeast Asia is not like that. Um, and so it makes it a little bit difficult uh, to travel to some of these places. Um, Thailand is kind of like that and Malaysia and Singapore, um, but uh, basically Sri Lanka is not. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to travel there um, and with good reason because it does take some preparation. Um, it is a complicated country to travel to. Now, if you go to the websites, you're going to see this Sri Lanka eGov arrivals, and then you'll have to scroll down to travel authorization, and then start your visa. Um, and then it will basically look something like this after you file your. So you'll click on this form, submit application online. It's a fairly straightforward process. For some reason, they only say six month visa, um, but I'm pretty sure it might be just 30 days. Um, so you may want to check with that um, just to double check. And there really isn't a whole lot to this website. You just do number of travelers, your date of entry, the date you're leaving, your name on your passport, date of birth, country of birth, gender, and some other basic things, and then building information. And it looks like um, you can go pretty quickly. And I heard it only takes a few, uh, basically like a day or even a few hours to get a return reply from Sri Lanka's government. So basically what you want to do is you have to have a uh, either a return ticket back to what other country you're coming from or an onward destination ticket so typically you need two tickets one ticket to sri lanka and then one ticket somewhere else or a return flight um, this is a round trip uh, prices and you can also select select one way i'll just show you the one-way prices um, and you can see that basically um, it's fairly fairly cheap uh, to many of these locations like Bali, uh, Phuket, uh, Manila, and I think they got uh, Da Nang, uh, Vietnam is right over here for $200. So basically a same day flight to Bali from uh, Sri Lanka might or to or from uh, may cost you around $350 um, and then it could be as low as $180 on the price graph here. Uh, the other thing when traveling around Southeast Asia that you should really know about is the uh, basically the rain system of how that works. So basically in the winter months, uh, primarily the east coasts of most of these uh, islands, so for example, uh, Vietnam, uh, the east coast here, um, and then the east coast here uh, has a lot of rain, and you can kind of prove that. Uh, by doing, uh, an, like if you want to do November schedule, you'll see there's a lot of rain uh, basically along this east coast here and then the east coast of Malaysia. Um, and, and then as you get closer to uh, April, uh, the rain basically changes to the west side and now you see it primarily on the west side and the west side here as well. So um, basically you want to kind of plan around the rainstorms. Um, and that makes uh, the winter months fairly good uh, in Sri Lanka overall. Uh, but you can use the rest of these um, maps to kind of see uh, where the rain is uh, throughout the year. I was a little bit disappointed with how pricey uh, Sri Lanka is in terms of the hotels. Um, there actually isn't a whole lot of really, really high-end hotels in Sri Lanka, um, and even the middle ones are around $35 a night, um, so you would basically end up spending about $50 a night, save for most of the hotels uh, on these maps. 
So here's kind of a zoom out so you can see, um, basically this is downtown Colombo, um, and you may actually have uh, quite a problem because uh, it may be pretty easy to stay here, uh, but not necessarily uh, down further south uh, in some of the nicer areas uh, that you'd actually want to stay in. So the economy of Sri Lanka is primarily uh, about 50% clothing. Uh, there's also a lot of tea, rubber, and uh, foods, uh, parts of the economy as well for export. So let's just give you a high level view of Sri Lanka, right? So you're basically flying in and out of the uh, west side of Sri Lanka, most likely. Um, and here's basically uh, the main map that you need to use uh, to understand what's going on for Sri Lanka. And you can see Colombo is right here, and that's basically where you'd be flying in and out of, and you'd probably be going down to the south side of the beaches areas. Now here's uh, one of the main tourist attractions is probably Gali, and you can see uh, some of the hotels uh, in that range. Uh, and I'm just going to change the price range down lower to about uh, below $60, just so you can see uh, the main areas here. And here's some kind of the overview map of what uh, the prices are uh, really close to the fort area. And you know, they'd probably want to stay right on there or maybe one of these hotels in this region. Now to get most of the safety problems uh, questions, you might want to look at uh, State Department of Sri Lanka and just search for that. Um, and you'll probably come up with a couple uh, travel advisories, um, travel information, um, is it safe to travel to Sri Lanka right now, um, and things like that um, that can help you understand what's going on in Sri Lanka. So at this current time, uh, I have seen places uh, that have been reconsidered travel uh, or even do not travel. Um, Sri Lanka is what's uh, is basically a number two. Um, so you would see Sri Lanka level two exercise increased caution. So you want to be actually pretty careful uh, relative to traveling to places in Europe uh, and other places that might be more familiar to you. So again, this is one of the main reasons I was really concerned about potentially uh, even working on this study because uh, I was worried about uh, the safety situation in Sri Lanka. Um, so if you do fly into the airport, it's basically about an hour or so to get into downtown uh, from the airport. So that could take uh, quite some time uh, to get into the air from the airport. Um, and further, uh, once you arrive in Colombo, uh, it may be uh, quite a drive uh, just to get down to Coconut Tree Hill, um, and that can be quite a uh, distance. Uh. So here you can see some of the prices. Um, basically, it's about 10 euros, or about 3,500 uh, Sri Lankan uh, currency, um, and it could take about 40 minutes uh, to get uh, from the airport to the hotel. Um, but I imagine these are probably low prices. Uh, 10 euros seems quite low to me, um, but uh, that's the prices that they say here. Uh, so one of the main things you'll notice uh, in Colombo is that uh, basically it's almost all Indian uh, here. Um, there's not a whole lot of tourists. Um, this is uh, Galley on the Green, uh, their beachfront uh, area, and you can see uh, as you look around, it's basically uh, not very many tourists here at all, and this is one of the main attractions uh, in uh, downtown Sri Lanka area. This area is basically this whole area right here. It's basically a beachfront area, um, and you can see as you zoom out, um, basically the airport um, is up here, um, and then this is basically the downtown uh, Colombo area, and then the galley on the green is right over here. And then there's two main lakes, uh, basically, uh, in Sri Lanka. And I would say it's probably not super, super safe, uh, even in the downtown areas. Here in this picture, you can see an army truck actually uh, cruising right uh, over the bridge. This is the uh, main area uh, right downtown uh, next to the lake. Um, and also Galley on the Green is just down that way there. So... There are a number of lakes, those two lakes here, and then you can see uh, basically what that looks like uh, along the lake here. Uh, they have a little bridge to a small little island that looks pretty nice, um, but uh, not a whole lot of people here. Let me show you briefly where this little island is. So you can see, I'll just zoom out, uh, then you can see uh, basically there's uh, this island here and then that was the bridge that we were on and then the galley on the green is over here so this is this lake that we were looking at right there 
Uh, the other lake includes this uh, lotus tower that you see. Um, you can actually go up uh, into the Colombo Lotus Tower, which is pretty cool. Um, but this is basically what the park looks like uh, surrounding that tower. And I'll show you where that is on the map really quick because it is a little bit confusing uh, to see here. So basically, um, this is the second lake, and then that Lotus Tower is located right here uh, on that area. Here's what it looks like up in the Lotus Tower. You can see uh, it's kind of like a pinkish color for some reason uh, because of the windows probably, but uh, pretty quiet, not a whole lot of people up here. And then down below again, you can see they have a little food place here uh, right next to the lake. And again, let me show you where that is located on the map here. So I'll turn off all the street view stuff. Um, so you have the galley on the green and you have that one uh, lake here and then the other Lotus Tower uh, with the lake here as well. Um, so you can see the Lotus Tower in the background here. Here's a fairly typical street. I just wanted to show you what a typical uh, street scene looks like. Um, these are the tuk-tuks uh, that you see all around Sri Lanka. Uh, you can rent them or have uh, someone drive you around in a tuk-tuk, which is pretty fun, it seems. I tried to pick some pretty iconic scenes, uh, areas, so this is just right in here. Um, you can see uh, it's in between these two lakes uh, right on Church Street. Um, so there's pretty busy areas in here, but that's what that looked like right there. And I'll just zoom back in here again so you can see um, a lot of tuk-tuks uh, parked over here. Um, people just uh, kind of hanging out in some stores uh, and areas. Um, there is an area in Colombo called the Fort area. Um, and you can just kind of see uh, what that looks like. Uh, it's pretty uh, fancy, a lot of uh, business buildings, uh, a little clock tower, as you can see here. Um, I'll show you where that is on a map here, so you can kind of see, um, basically we're looking at this area right in here, but it's called the Colombo Fort. And then you have uh, the Gordon Gardens uh, and some other areas. But let me zoom out and kind of keep that um, in perspective to the galley on the green. So this is the galley face green here uh, and then the two lakes. Uh, and basically what we're looking at is this Fort Colombo. And if you zoom in, you can see there's a big clock tower there uh, near the fort. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the study of Colombo and Sri Lanka. Um, there are so many different places to check out. I highly recommend uh, looking at all the street views. Uh, here's a mosque that you can see uh, and uh, some other areas um, and some temples. Uh, these are all in Colombo. Um, and I uh, just recommend going through and check out all the Street View imagery that you can uh, prior to going there. So I just remind everybody that the yellow fever vaccine is required. Uh, they'll probably ask you at the airport for that. Um, and then you'll also have to file the electronic travel authorization ETA system. Uh, use that as well prior to entering the country. Um, and all that um, it does take a little bit of time, um, but it's very wise uh, to really make sure you get your route planned out uh, perfectly before going to Sri Lanka. So again, this situation is improving uh, pretty rapidly in Sri Lanka. I would expect the next 10 years, um, you know, average uh, salary even to get up to $20,000 per year uh, per person in Sri Lanka. Um, and definitely look at the in and out. So part of it, um, I was looking at Goa as an option, which is up here. Um, and then also going down to uh, Daspar Airport, which is Bali, and then Phuket, Thailand, uh, and then looking at Cebu Airport down here uh, in the Philippines. Um, but basically looking for some cheaper alternatives uh, to travel to, um, and actually Sri Lanka is a little bit complicated. Um, I think once you get down to the beaches, uh, it's a little bit easier. Uh, Goa is actually a little bit closer to the, air the airport's a little bit closer to the downtown and to the beaches, so it's a little bit easier to get there. Um, but the prices are so cheap. Um, to get a taxi that it may be actually okay. And the visa requirements really are important to get. Um, in general, I would say it's really tough to stay beyond 30 days in any country in Southeast Asia. Um, some of them say you can stay 60 days, 90 days. A lot of that requires uh, filing extra forms. I've seen uh, just a lot of work involved. So it may be best to fly into a country for 30 days and then go to another country after that.
And then here's the travel authorization page. You want to kind of go through that um, and look through the State Department, what they have as well. A yellow fever vaccine may cost up to $200, um, so that's something to think about. Um, and then there's also these other shots, um, so it could be pretty expensive um, for a uh, vaccine. And here again is all the prices in and out to the various airports. I would definitely recommend the safety factor. Um, it's probably a little more safe than Manila. Um, I would say Manila is uh, actually a pretty complicated place to travel to. Uh, and that's why a lot of people don't uh, necessarily directly travel to Manila uh, when going to the Philippines. Now, if you're interested in getting the price graph, uh, what I'd recommend uh, is go to flights.google.com and then click on this right here, uh, which is price graph. And then you can basically get the uh, prices going out uh, a few weeks. Let me know if you have any questions about traveling to or from uh, Sri Lanka. I'd be glad to try to work with you. Um, I'm helping to try to find a perfect trip. Um, one thing I'd really recommend that I didn't cover in this video is the safaris. Um, it seems like that's one of the major attractions uh, for Sri Lanka. Um, there's a couple national parks. Um, and there's another place called Candy in the center of the island um, that would definitely be worth uh, covering as well as Jaffa uh, uh, on the far north um, of the island. Uh, but the reason I kept this kind of short, uh, hopefully, uh, was because I wanted to focus primarily on getting into the country and going to one of the most iconic places, uh, which is Gali down in the south of Sri Lanka. Anyway, thanks everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this study of Sri Lanka and all the details about uh, the island uh, and the culture and things that you could try to check out uh, when visiting. Thank you so much. See you.